Thank you guys again for joining the Acuity Customer Podcast. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, This particular episode, I'm joined by Steve McHugh, who is the founder of Broom Street Software, along with his partner, Martin Cohen. Um, We've done a episode, a long form interview, I should say, with Martin about one half of the Broom Street uh, business and how they serve the QAD space uh, with the sweeper application and specific specifically the infrastructure and server support, uh, our DBA services that they have. Uh, did that with Martin. This particular episode with Steve goes over the third party bolt-on products that they have you know, for the QAD space, whether that be the mobilization of QAD, the web portals um, that they have successfully brought to market, the services that they bring um, to the QAD space. And we cover a lot of um, you know examples on how they've done that well. And I I think it's, uh, uh, we cover a lot of topics that I think you guys would benefit from listening to about how to think about consultants, how to think about um, ancillary products, use, utilizing those products in you know, with your usage of QAD um, and how to drive you know, progress forward in your manufacturing business, both from an IT standpoint, as well as from like a business application um, standpoint. So tune in, let us know what you guys think, and uh, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That would help out a lot. Thanks. What do you got? History well, of Broom Street. I was, I was actually just telling a, a customer yesterday, because we're like right near the actual original Broom Street. That's right. So, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, uh, I guess it was almost 1993. Uh, 93, 1993. Oh, yeah. So that's thir- almost 30 years. Nice. What month in 93? It, I think it was in December. Okay. I think so. I got married nice. in 94. I think I'd been working for myself for like six months. Nice. Yeah, I was uh, eight months old. So, <laughs> so uh, whoops, <laughs> that's um, a bad start. <laughs> so we know you're 30. I, <laughs> well, so that makes month. me 40. <laughs> yeah, <you> know, right. <laughs> that makes me exactly. 40. So, uh, so uh, I left QAD. I worked for QAD. I started my career at Unisys in the Coast Guard. Okay. At a Coast Guard base in Cape May, New Jersey. Oh, really? It was a cool oh, job. Yeah. I worked on the beach. Oh, nice. Beach That's office. Awesome. It was nice. It was hard to leave that job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I wanted yeah. to get closer to Philly, so yeah. I came back. And uh, believe it or not, I had progress experience at the Coast Guard. Really? And at the Coast, the Coast Guard? Used yes, running VMS uh, machines. Okay. Vax. No, yeah. BTOS and CTOS, okay. it was called. Okay. Operating system. Huh. They were like a Max almost. Okay. They were like individual computers. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And... Uh, Believe it or not, I had progress experience. Yeah, wow. And, and QAD in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, was looking yeah. for <laughs> yeah, progress experience. It was just like rare to find, yeah. So uh, yeah, started, they'd hire you and all your colleagues for that. <laughs> yeah, they hired me. In fact, I tried to get one of my colleagues to come up with me. And uh, and then in 90, th- so I worked at QAD for four years, had a great experience there. Love, I actually love working there. I just, mm-hmm. I just uh, you know, I'm just sort of an independent type of yeah. person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so I... I um, Started Broom Street in 1993. Yeah. Um, I had offers to go work for Pix yeah. and for another a couple other companies, but I yeah. I, I uh, actually started uh, yeah, doing so my own thing, thing. Yeah. Uh, which fits me personally, yeah. gives me that freedom. Yeah. Um, That's good. And for the first five or six years, it was just me, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I started bringing on people on board and partnering with folks. So you know, it's been quite a journey. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Martin was one of your first customers too, right? Martin was one of my first customers, and he actually became he actually ended up working for me. Yeah, and okay. he he's been working with Broom Street almost. To be honest with you, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it was a while. It's been a while. I think yeah. he came on. Yeah. Around Y two K. Okay. And then we hired Bill Boyd. Uh, he worked with us for a long time. Okay. Um. Uh, and now we have uh, a couple other folks. Yeah. We do a lot of subcontracting and we do, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was got to meet a few of the few of the guys at the conferences here, you know, right? We have a young guy now, we're trying yeah. to get younger, yeah, as you can that's tell. Good. That's uh, good, <laughs> hence why we're sitting here in front of cameras. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good, though. No, we're getting, we're, you know, we're. There's an opportunity in the QD market, I think. Uh, oh yeah, for us, uh, that it's hard not to take advantage of. Yeah, there is. And um, we love what we do. 
I, I don't, yeah. you know, people ask me all the time, do I want to retire? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, 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 I don't see myself retiring for at yeah. least 20 years. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's interesting getting kind of, you know, we, we just, we've been working together, you know, in different forms, but obviously getting to know you guys much in a much deeper way and what you guys do in a deeper way, get to talk to your customers, things like that. Um, definitely felt like it was necessary to document all of the different aspects of Broom Street. Cause even talking with, um, other people in the space, you know, it's a, it's a name that's been around, right? You guys right. have been, been around for 30 years, right. you know, next year with, so it's been around, but everyone kind of has their slice of how they've interacted with you, whether it's the services Correct. side, the infrastructure side, the, you know, mobile desk side. Right. Um, we have so. people who just think I'm like a mobile desk, like right. a, I'm an app person. Yeah. And yeah. they don't realize the breadth of knowledge yeah. they have with QAD. Like you came in last night off of, uh, you know, implementing QAD. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, a, you know, a variety. That, 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 you know, yeah. I'm lucky enough to, when I started my career, QED put me in positions where I had to do everything. Yeah. Okay. They threw me into the fire. Yeah. And uh, so, what was your role with QED? Uh, I took out the trash. Okay. <laughs> I picked up uh, nice. uh, uh, presidents and vice presidents at the airport. <laughs> nice. Uh, I had to nice. support QED, uh, install QED. Nice. <laughs> uh, wow. Market. Yeah. Vaporware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anything that anything uh, they yeah. asked me to do, it was yeah. it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, wow. And I, you know, I got to travel a lot. Yeah. I really enjoyed my time there, yeah. even though it was a short, it was only four years, but yeah. it was, uh, and I have kept those relationships for a long time Oh yeah, with the people yeah. who work there. And I still work with all the QED folks. And yeah. It's been, it's been, it's been quite a journey. Yeah. There's, there's definitely kind of an old guard at QED as well. And then even in the QED space, you know, the, all the partners are are part of that old guard, but just have really Correct. started their old, own businesses or, you know, and some of them like, like picks, you know, is now second generation or handed, you know, to somebody else via sale or something like, uh, I don't know, how, like factivity, how long they've been around, but something like somebody like that. Right. You know, it's like right. a second iteration, you know? No. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so the, so you guys, I mean, we talked a lot with Martin about kind of the infrastructure side, cause that's really his, his domain, right. you know? Uh, went through server support, managed services, um, you know, RDBA, all those areas. Um, but there's kind of two domains that I think you're, you have your hands in a lot, you know, which is around the managed services for right. the actual application of QAD, right. um, including implementation services, you know, support, um, like a retainer based ongoing support contracts Correct. to help customers handle that. And then the other side, which people are familiar with, you know, is the intellectual property of Broom Street, which is mobile, mobile, mobile. Right. <laughs> right? The infamous vendor intro from Frankie. That's right. <laughs> and uh, and then in conjunction with that, there's other categories like the uh, web portals, like the supplier portal or, or things of that nature. Right. You know, there's a, exactly. a variety of those. So I think it might be helpful, you know, and I think we'll, we can talk through a little bit about the experiences that customers have had with each of these areas and, and what makes them, you know, a valuable part of somebody's business. Right. Um, well, I guess there's a third category before I get into that, which is, um, what you guys have naturally done in, in response to needs that the customer has, like right. for instance, the Shopify integration or the other, what was that other uh, company, the channel channel advisors, channel advisors. Yeah. Right. For like more big box retail. But let's start off with um, kind of the breadth of mobile desk because I know, you know, even I think even looking at your mouse pad, there's a lot that, that goes into mobile desk, right? Right. Um, so like what, what are some of the most commonly used um, asset or, you know, pieces of mobile desk that, that people commonly use? Yeah, I think uh, when we started with mobile desk, it was more of just like, geez, it was sort of like fun project just to see if we could. Yeah. connect to QAD via an iOS and iPhone mm -hmm. because if everyone's on their phone. Yeah. yeah. You know, the fact that, you know, you have access to your QAD system on your phone yeah. that runs like an app is, is pretty powerful. So, you know, things that lend themselves for people out are in the field, right? So yeah. we have like a mini CRM app mm -hmm. that uh, it's called sales desk. Mm -hmm. That is uh, quite useful for companies. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's geared for people who are out in the field, salespeople, yeah. Tech engineers, we have a mobile field desk service, uh, okay. field service app 
that okay. actually QAD actually asked us to to write for them okay. when they were trying to get a client in the, in, in Europe. Oh wow! Okay. So that was the nexus of that app. Okay. Uh, okay. Tony yeah. Winner at the time came to yeah. us and said, "Can you can you write us an app? We yeah. need this. We we don't okay. have one yet." Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, that was the nexus of that, and that became our probably our biggest selling app is our field service. App. Is that is that the one that's that's pretty common around like the life science? Yes. Um, for yeah, like, yeah. Fields. Yeah. Anything where you have an installed base. So okay. like we have a company that does water jets. Yeah. A company that does. Uh, like uh, dental equipment, uh, uh, all anybody who's doing anything in the field yeah. who has an installed base. Yeah. For those people on QED, you know, installed base, it's a service yeah. and support module. You have your installed base and you send your, uh, your texts mm-hmm. out and they can record all their time. Mm. They can okay. take pictures. They can use all the power of the phone, right? right. They can do electronic signature. Yeah. They can take pictures. They can yeah. record their time. Okay. And they can close a call. Yeah. They can generate a PDF report right on there and have the customer yeah. sign for it. Okay. So okay. that's that's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. So what what is the the back end to that? Like what? How is that extending QAD? What components of QAD is that extending? So it's it's. In that particular field service, it's it's extending the QED service module, okay. right? Yeah. And then we communicate with QED via web service, okay, gotcha. right? Which yeah. is just Tom. It's anybody who's technical. Yeah. It's anybody who's. Uh, it's the same components that QED runs. Mm-hmm. So it's that's sort of a selling point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no really software that needs to get installed. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. progress and Tomcat. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we have we have our own proprietary APIs. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. that allows us to communicate with QAD. Okay, and then we can dive. Maybe this might be more for someone who's technical listening. But like, is that a? Are you deploying those APIs like next to the QAD server? Yes. Server? Okay. Yeah. So, so it's like still that that's still something that QAD allows in the cloud. Correct. Know? Um, and then so you deploy that API next to the QAD instance in wherever that is. Correct. You know, and, on premise in the cloud, private cloud, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And then, how does the the app connect? Is it like through a proxy server? App server. App okay. server. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Right. So for security, for those who are security, yeah. QD spins up some yeah. servers outside the network. Okay, proxy gotcha. servers. Gotcha. Okay. Right? So they, communicate with that server, and then that, you can that communicates that. with QD. But right. the actual the nuts and bolts are on the on the server next okay. sitting next to QD. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And then another one of our uh, popular apps is Mobile Trunk. Okay. Yeah. Which is basically trunk inventory for sales reps. Okay. I think that's the one that I was thinking about. Was right. So for- it's anybody who's out in the field. Yeah. That's really where you need to use mobile, right? You're not going to have yeah. someone running the GL right. on their mobile. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah. could. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Technically, I guess if they like leave their office for a minute. Right. Right. And like, yeah. like uh, you know. I have customers who use credit hold, right? Yeah. Yep. They do credit holds and a lot of times credit holds just you're hitting a button to release yeah. an order off credit hold. Yeah. Well, they may only have two credit people in the company and they're right. not they're at an offsite meeting. Yeah. They yeah. can't they don't want to log into QAD and release orders off hold, so they right. can do it on their mobile device. Okay. Okay. And they oh, get a notification that, yeah. hey, this order's on hold, can you? Yeah. And they look on their phone and they release it. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a, a purchase requisition app, approval mm-hmm. app, which is sort of, you know, QED has one too. Yeah, so, the GRS thing. Yeah, the yeah. GRS. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. The nice thing is, our apps go backward compatible. So, they, if you're on an older right. version of QED, they work. Yeah. yeah. They work on the new versions, they work yeah. on the old versions. So, okay. if a customer. For some reason, can't upgrade in a yeah. time period, and they yeah. still want to use mobile. There's yeah. no reason they can't use mobile for a little bit. Got it. Okay. And then take advantage of the QAD technology when they yeah. go to the cloud because the the new QAD technology is very nice. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. very nice. Yeah. So if so if they so for a customer who's looking at you know say they've got um, a number of sales reps say that that are out in the field they've got trunk stock con, you know or consignment inventory right. at a hospital or or something like that but would they so a, a customer that purchases mobile desk and utilizes it for like the mobile trunk correct um what how does that interplay like i say okay now we also want our techs to be using the, field desk yeah field desk like how does that they just buy one license so okay. it's a, it's because it's a, you're not going to have a user's yeah. using mobile trunk is not going to be a field engineer right right right, right. so yeah. Yeah. even though you get all the apps with the price right yeah you, you know i'm going to use 
if I'm a field engineer, I'm going to use the field app. Right, right. If I'm a salesperson using mobile yeah. trunk, I'll use that. Or if I'm looking at my sales history, my yeah. mini CRM, I call yeah. it. Yeah. Or they're doing things like, um, you know, inventory. They yeah. want to look at their inventory, on, yeah. you know, on the mobile device. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we, we have a poor man's like uh, data collection too. Yeah. Okay. If you just want to do certain transactions on your, uh, mm -hmm. on an Android device. Yeah. And you don't want to invest in all the time and money in some of the larger yeah. players in that in that market. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, including yeah. including QAD. Right. Right. I'm, we're not we're not trying to compete with QAD, right. but if if a customer has a need to do an inventory transfer and yeah. that's all they need, yeah, yeah, they can just do it on a you know it's like a, poor, a light version of just doing a quick okay. transaction. Okay. On on an Android or or an iOS. Okay. And we have okay. customers like that too. Okay. So, so you got we covered mobile trunk, field desk, right? Um, and the PO rec uh, and sales desk is sales, sales desk. desk is, oh, that's the mini CRM, right? Yeah. yeah, we have one customer who uses like they have a hundred sales reps. Okay, and they're just looking at their data. Yeah, yeah. On you know their sales yeah. month to right. date, year to date yeah. reports. Yeah, uh, the list of customers who's on credit hold. Right. So it's got all the information that's in QAD. Right. Your okay. your accounts receivable aging. Yeah. You know. Huh. All that okay. data is available. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. So okay. So then the, the way that that would work is like you you know they a customer purchases um, you know mobile from from Broom Street and now they've got they can then assign licenses to people and Correct. utilize these various components. Right. Um, like if does it all use the same integration um, components? Yes. Like, okay. So like it, it, there's just the one API. That, that is installed when you're when you deploy mobile right and then now you, you can turn on these apps and then is there much configuration there's some that? configuration okay. uh, on the back end you have to set yeah. up the users right. the key thing about mobile is you only see the data you're responsible for right okay so yeah. all that built-in data yeah. level security is done on the back end right so an example I'm a salesperson yeah. I'm territory X mm -hmm. Yeah. They only see territory X data. Okay. Okay. Right. Cool. Yeah. But then the manager can see X and Y. Yeah. So they get to see X and Y data. Right. That makes sense. And then the top, top of the pyramid yeah. can see everything. Right. Got so it. Yeah. that's key because you want that data to be fast and right. secure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's really the magic I think of how the system oh, yeah. works. Right. Yeah. Because it's, you have to, build that matrix of what people get to see on the app. Yeah. Does that, um, so in, in building that, that like matrix component to it on what's seen, like, do they, is there like a, an admin, com, uh, I'm assuming component to it that there's an admin component. Yeah. We call it a control center. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so, sense. so where you set up the users, yeah. what they can see, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. all sorts of things. Okay, so what, what other so you know what other apps that, out of those three you know those three I, I, I've I've heard of a lot you know right. <laughs> people people definitely use those a lot right um, what other apps are available if when someone deploys you know mobile oh so we have the purchasing desk everything's mm. called desk right yeah. that's sort of our yeah. panache I guess yeah. that's our naming convention yeah. so it's the purchasing ordering if you want to just do uh, quick sales orders on the on the app yeah uh, we have a mobile trunk yeah. Uh, field desk, which is the field service yeah. inventory desk, which is like I said, the trans inventory transactions. So they're the main apps there. Okay, so it's really Credit like if you think about the the transactions across the business that would happen within QAD. Right. There's likely a, a mobile component to that where it makes sense. Right, and <laughs> we know? can do custom apps too. Yeah. Okay. We, you know, we you know, if somebody wants a a, a focused app that does these three things, yeah, we can. Yeah. We we use the same platform. We just right. Have our mobile. We just yeah. we just write a couple new APIs. Right. And the beauty of having the the mobile development, mm -hmm. our mobile developers really don't need to know anything about QAD. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because just making calls back and forth. You're making a phone yeah. call. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're, that's all these APIs do. Hey, yeah. make a phone call to this number yeah. and give me the list of orders. Yeah. 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 And now we're going into the, you know, we're working with, with the Web Jaguar folks. Yeah. Or what, yeah. QED has a new name for that, I think it's called. Oh, do, do they? Yeah, I think oh, it's man. called. Oh, man, we should know the branding. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, I yeah. forget it. I don't yeah. know. We should know that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to look, we'll look that up. I can clip that in here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, um, so the Web Jaguar, so yeah, I think that's a good segue kind of over towards, um, you know, these these 
platforms that people that customers utilize to Correct. interact with a QAD customer and, and purchase their their products and services. You know, is that um, you know there's the Web Jaguar application which QAD I think has rebranded, but that's part of the QAD umbrella of products now. Correct. And then you've got something like a Shopify, which people are very familiar with, or even just the interaction with with big you know big box retailers. Right. So, know, so. Uh, we have a cus- we have customers who have their Shopify storefronts and yeah. they want those orders to go in the QAD. Yeah. Yeah. So we've written all those integrations. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of integrations. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a very strong suit of our company from a yeah. service standpoint. Yeah. Uh, so we do integrations that communicate with Shopify. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have an integrations that go with this company called channel advisors, which mm-hmm. is a, uh, it's like a marketplace. So mm-hmm. we don't communicate with Amazon or eBay, target, Walmart, and home Depot they their websites integrate with channel advisors Mm -hmm. so we don't have to then we just integrate with channel advisors and we get all those orders Mm -hmm. wow so we load those orders into qad when it's shipped we communicate back with them and the customer says your order's coming Mm -hmm. and yeah and and that's how that works okay so so is it is it like a push and pull then from shopify it's a pull we pull from from we pull from shopify then we push back yeah uh, the shipment confirmations. Okay, but they, you know, there's no magic to it really. These these marketplaces, including Web Jaguar, have APIs. Yeah, yeah. So all you need is a special key and yeah. you know a token, and you yeah. can start yeah. communicating with these websites. You know, th- there's a lot of people. There's a lot of in IT, especially. You know, and this is probably a uh, commentary on on how IT people yeah. think. You know, things aren't that hard. Yeah. It, it, people make them out to be harder than they overcomplex. They, they overcome. Oh well, yeah. you no, know, that's a that's a six month project to yeah. grab your orders from Shopify. Yeah, and it really isn't. Yeah. And and uh, you know we try and take the mystery out of that. Mm-hmm. Like you know you know things don't need to be six month projects. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that we're very good with. Now yeah. I've noticed that. You know, when, yeah. when, we, when we we do work with some companies that don't like our approach. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's fair because, yeah. you know, I understand. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, bigger companies don't like, may, may want a six-month project. Yeah. And I mean this in like the, the and best I don't, way. You know, yeah, I don't. I mean this in the best way possible, but I, I see Broom Street as kind of like a, a more of a scrappy organization where it's like, you're going to come in, figure it out as as best that it can be done, but as simple as it can be done. You yeah. Know? And doing more with less. Right. Know? And there's so, a, you know, yeah. the simpler, the better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, I don't, you know, that's just the philosophy I have. Yeah. You know, yeah. the more, the, the simpler well, it is. Well, it's easier to support on the back end as well. You know, right. if you have a simple, simple product, it's easy to interact with for, you know, right. simple process. You know, it's easy to interact with as an end user. There's not a huge learning curve with all these nuts and bolts that you got to kind of figure right. out. And then also all those points of failure, you know, it's like, you, it could be a support headache to try and figure out where exactly that failure happened. If right. you've got this overly engineered and complex product right yeah so sense. we yeah. try and keep things as simple as possible yeah okay. and you know it's you know so that's so our is approach. It, what what um with the sh- like i know shopify has got like a marketplace um and channel channel advisors right that's what right yeah uh, i'm not i'm not as familiar with them but what um what ma- what would make a qad user like what about their business would make them think, oh, I should actually look further into this. Like it, it, is it if they're trying to sell direct to consumer? S- or? Sell direct to consumer, okay. yeah. right? So okay. if you have, you know, a lot of QED customers don't sell direct to right. consumer, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, the ones that do yeah. need to have storefronts, right? right? And whether they design their own yeah, or they take advantage of, you know, the big box retailers, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. that who are buying those products, yeah. right? That are they're selling on Amazon, eBay, Target, Walmart. Yeah. So stuff. I think about like a like a Skosh, who's a very well known QAD user, who um, you know, it, likely if you look at the magnet on the back of your phone for your car, it's usually a Skosh oh, okay. <laughs> product. Um, or or they they also have like these like little portable speakers. Right, they do a lot on Amazon. You know, but that, like in Target, you know, you can buy Scotch products, right. things like that. Uh, so that that would be one category. So maybe more like the consumer goods products. But Correct. It, but then I'm even thinking too is probably more more and more food and beverage as well. You know, especially after the 
the uh, pandemic, like if, if a food and beverage company is thinking about how to expand their reach in a market, this could be a, and a, and their acuity user. This could be a good opportunity for for one of them to think about how could I start to sell um, you on know, these direct to consumer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, exactly. And expand our market a bit. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, so that's I think that would be a, a big one. Like an automotive manufacturer, no. th- probably not not the best fit for that. No, but. automotive <laughs> yeah. automotive yeah. manufacturers normally yeah. aren't. Big mobile, but even like somebody like a MyTech who just purchased a bunch of residential companies, you know, and are trying to bring out, roll out a one QAD model, you know, right. where, which is, which is a great model. You know, a lot of companies, I was just talking to, to a company yesterday who has run, running 13 different ERP systems. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's really, really right. challenging because then you've got these extensions of those ERP systems. Right. So like if you're trying to roll out QAD across an entire enterprise, especially if it's a global you know, you've merged or acquired a bunch of businesses trying to roll that out. I think it's a good idea to think about how to extend the QAD product to replace what might be out there. You right. Because a lot of people might go with a Dynamics or an Acumatica or something like that, as opposed to a QAD because it's cloud-based, it's agile, it's extendable. But with QAD, you've got the robustness of like an SAP and Oracle, but right. it still has the opportunities for, you know, extensibility. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. So. And it's simple enough, you know, for that in that case. So I, I like that idea, that thought, you know, especially for companies that are looking at rapid M and A strategies. They may try and target a market that is more direct to consumer within their product category. Correct. You know. Yep. Um, like my tech, you can go to Home Depot and buy my tech products, but they also sell like massive trusses for like you know big. Um, like skyscrapers, correct? You know what I mean. That's probably not direct consumer, no. <laughs> you know. No. So, but being able to extend your QAD product, you know, in order to serve both of those markets is really important. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. There's a door manufacturer that it, this is top of mind because I was just talking with them uh, two days ago, and we were talking about a QAD upgrade and what sorts of things they could be taking advantage of. Um, but they just merged with a company. It was just that exact scenario where it's mostly direct to consumer residential. They're mostly commercial right. doors, you know, so they're trying to figure out if we move everybody to QAD, how do we manage two Both. different business models? And they are, they are yeah. different yeah. Uh, because yeah. uh, the direct shipments are yeah. going to be handled differently than yeah. shipments to like a truckload right. that you're sending to Amazon yeah. or yeah. you're sending to another one of your customers, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know. You got to be able to be, even within a QAD implementation, you have to be able to be able to handle those splitting of those channels. Yeah. Those sales channels. Yeah. Right. So, because it's a different business process. Yeah. I mean, how should they think about that kind of rolling up um, further upstream for a QAD customer who's like thinking about retooling their manufacturing floor or like reconfiguring something like that to serve more of those? Like how? Should they be think? Should they like think about that, or should they just try to? No, like, I mean they I th- they need to think about it because yeah. like they may want to manufacture for one channel in one mm-hmm. part of the building. Yeah, you know, yeah, where the where the quantities are full pallets mm-hmm. or they're big containers yeah. where yeah. these direct to consumers are a box. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. you may have a different part of the warehouse that ships your direct parcels. Yeah, and using like a UPS. Yeah. Or then you're going to have that part of the warehouse that's you know yeah. doing truckloads. That that made me think about it too because you know one of the one of the customers that we do a lot of business with they were talking about how QA sometimes the standard model within an ERP system assumes that you have like unlimited space opportunities like especially for the manufacturing floor right like you've got you can just pr- basically do whatever their best practice is and implement it in your. In, in your business. Right. But that might not, you may have to be agile in some ways. So instead of, but then come to find out in the QAD space is very common where they make QAD fit their model, uh, you know, and then they get stuck in a version. Right. They can't take advantage of some of these new opportunities that QAD is rolling out, new acquisitions that they're making. Right. You know, rolling out these new products. So it, I think it's important for a QAD user now who's thinking about the future too to think about if I need QAD to be adaptable, maybe I could look at something like the mobile or like a web portal or an integration to Shopify or something right. of that nature as opposed to customizing my ERP. <laughs> to, no, no, to no. That, you know what right. I mean? And, and yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. we, 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 you know, 
historically we've done a lot of customization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, we try and do them in the best manner that we, our customers don't mm -hmm. yeah. get landlocked at those yeah. versions. Yeah. And it's really up to the customer. I have customers who just are religious about mm -hmm. going up to the next version. Yeah. And others who really don't. Yeah. They don't see any need for it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they, you know, if it ain't for, broke, don't fix it. Yeah. For whatever <laughs> yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they yeah. they're, they're a little more. Um, you know, what's the word for it? I don't even think it's a money issue. I think, it's I think it could be cultural because we see that cultural. a lot where it's like a, the change management process for some companies is just a, a bear. You know, right. It's just not a part of their DNA as a company right. to like implement those sorts of overhauls and changes. Right. Right. Because, right. you know, uh, doing implementations of the web UI, is, it, it's, yeah. it's eye opening. It's uh, yeah. I really love the product. Yeah. I think it's it's. It's really nice to work with. It's extensible. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't know too much about that. I'm not sure how much the QAD mar you know market's educated about it, and it's helpful to have two guys that are not a part of QAD <laughs> talk about right. something like this. Not to say that QAD it, it, that QAD's not being fully transparent about it or anything like that. It's just helpful to have more nuanced conversations about something like a new product like the web UI it's know, fantastic I have yeah. to say I really? mean I'm really impressed by it what what like tell me about like where QAD's at with it I know this is a little bit unrelated to Broom Street but I think it is because we talk about services and managed services for the application at Broom Street so to get a feel for where the QAD application is I think that's a, I mean kind of a good segue there I would say it's very close to having all the features mm. in, in that are existing in like say the .NET. Mm. Okay. There's some things that aren't still there. I, yeah. I don't have a list or anything like yeah. that, but yeah. I come across things, mm -hmm. you know, when we're doing an implementation, yeah. you know, oh, we can do everything except this. Yeah. And you, that way you have to go to the .NET to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, I don't know if it's challenging. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. the users really, at the end of the day, they live with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's yeah. not. It's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. But you know, uh, order entry. You know, data setup, mm -hmm. uh, purchase order. You know, all that is on the web UI. I mean, it's okay. You know. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just like a more intuitive. Is it like what's the, or is it, like did they change the back end infrastructure on that? I don't know if it's just easier to work with. I yeah. don't know. It's okay. It's, They've gone to what I, it's my, in my opinion, it's self-service. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. Here's a website, yeah. mm -hmm. which the web UI is. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a website. Yeah. There, you got your videos, you got your online documentation, mm -hmm. you got everything you need to figure out how to use yeah. the software. Yeah. Right. That's, mm. I think, you know, because when's the last time anybody had a training class? Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have training classes anymore. Yeah. When I was going through in my career, yeah. you'd go to a week training yeah. class, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. No. And yeah. so they want everyone to sort of figure it out. People themselves. don't want to learn that way either. You know, especially people like to just, hey, how do I do this 30 seconds on Google or well, you know, click on the training icon, you know? <laughs> I, I, I would disagree with that in some regards. Really? Yeah. I, okay. I still work with a lot of people who, you know, they're not self-starters. Okay. Okay. I see. Yeah. Right. If you're yeah. a self-starter and yeah. you want to figure it out, yeah. it's all in there for you. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. But if you're not a self-starter. Mm. Yeah. And not everyone's wired that way. So yeah. th there is still a, uh, to sit down, have a training class yeah. on how to do this. Yeah. So do, do you see uh, that's something as, that Broom Street would be a, a big proponent in or like big component for yeah, somebody? Yeah, I would. That yeah, that's yeah. sort of a nice another yeah. part that we in our business, we could yeah. offer training for yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Because you guys, I mean, you obviously do that as a part of implementation. We do that as part of implementations. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, that whole idea of getting classes, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it's something that. I, you know, I guess, I don't know if there's a market for it anymore, like yeah. you said. And, and well, I mean, it, I think one of the things that we saw on the at the user groups, you know, when Ben did his presentation and, and you and Martin kind of supported him in that presentation right. around the web UI, there was a lot of interest and he kind of showed how how to even navigate the self-starter <laughs> training <laughs> component right. to it. You know, I forget what the, they have a name for that, that like... Uh, where that thing that shows you, the wizard that shows you. Oh, guide me. Guide me, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's kind of walking through that and then extending that a little bit. Like, you know, like this is where it shows you to do this, but that you can also do this, this, and this, you know? Right, I mean? yeah. right. Yeah. yeah the hard part is, I think, with users is that it's not the interface. They don't understand what's happening. Mm. Okay. Right? Got it. Yeah. Right. I, I, I confirm a shipper. What did that really do? Mm. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm not just a button pusher. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. I confirm a shipment. But yeah. what does it really do? And I think that's where I think mm. I've seen that knowledge go away over the years. Yeah. Okay. So the web UI could help with, with still functioning really well with that knowledge not fully there. Correct. Yeah. That right. Makes sense. I mean, I'm seeing that more people are more specialized than they mm -hmm. used to be. Yeah. And you know, okay. when you did, when you used to do an implementation, there'd be like ten people on the implementation team. Yeah. Yeah. And there was, you know, there were a lot of training, a lot yeah. of this. People don't get that anymore. Yeah. Huh. You know, it's just yeah. thought. It's it's it's. Uh, it's kind of like a, a more of a software as a service, or like. Even a, a, it reminds me a lot of Google where you've got like your maps, your Google Drive, you know, the marketplace, like there's all these other, the search engine, you've got all these other components of Google that you can navigate right. and use. It's very intuitive. You get on the website, you can do all these things. It's kind of like, you know, QED financials, you know, MRP, you know, it's that you've got these other, all these components right. that you can use. And, but you don't want to know how Google's interacting with their database to save your Google doc and share it no. to somebody else. You just want to be able to click into the UI and do it. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So right. it's the same sort of model. Same sort of like. model. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I, I, I'm enjoying working with it. Yeah. You know, so, I, you know I'm an old school guy, so I have yeah. character dot net <laughs> and, and web UI all up at the same time. <laughs> nice. Cause there's certain yeah. things that I do that. Yeah. 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 It's easier. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'm enjoying using the web UI. I think it's a really nice okay, tool. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so someone, I mean, someone who's interested in that, definitely, you, know, you can talk with QAD, you can talk with, with Broom Street about the components of getting to something like that. Um, you know, big question mark um, when someone goes into an, 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 you know, upgrade or an implementation of the newer version is where are you at now, you know? Um, and I think that that's, that's been something that I've noticed working with you guys more, more and more people don't even, to your point, don't really even know what's going on now within their QAD application and what the gaps might be to get to that, that newer model. Right. You know? So do you have any examples on how like you guys have kind of scaled that? I know I like the simple approach <laughs> to that too. You know what I mean? Right. Where you're not trying to over -comple complex. Well, you know, we're doing everything. some projects right. now where the customer's coming from a really old version. Yeah. And, um, and they're not running financials. Okay. So if you're running financials, you have to use the you have to use the new EE financials, and if yeah. they're on an older version, that's training and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But we're trying to bring those people over to the platform where they mm -hmm. can use the platform, mm -hmm. but retain their old business processes until mm -hmm. they can take advantage mm -hmm. to get you know to go into the cloud. Yeah. Be it on a modern progress. You're you don't have any hardware issues anymore. Right. Yeah. You can use your you're not on an 08 server. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. you're you're in the yeah. cloud and you're running sort of your the way you ran right. before. Yeah. But now you have this mm -hmm. this tool mm -hmm. that you can slowly move to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the nice thing about it is I can I can use purchasing mm -hmm. if I want to move my my purchasing group over to web UI and still mm -hmm. have manufacturing and order entry. Yeah. Maybe I'm bringing over, you know, yeah. processes that are really old so if, if you're in a really old version of se or even before that you can kind of bring your business process into the cloud okay. taking advantage of the platform and yeah. getting up and running yeah okay so how i mean how does that work obviously you you lift you lift and shift what you have into the cloud and then you, yeah, they, yeah. They, they use a standard qed cloud but we bring over a lot of their their business processes and all their customizations got it okay so okay. they can still run the way they have been, but now they're in the cloud. Yeah. They're in a standard environment right. that QAD can maintain for them. Yeah. Yeah. And they can, they can start utilizing the analytics, the KPIs, mm -hmm. which is a big selling point of the web yeah. UI. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know? The kind of configurable reporting, dashboarding exactly. type of feel. Right, yeah. which is yeah. very powerful. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Definitely. So you can, you can imagine a customer on 8.5. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to go to the cloud. Yeah, let's get let's get their business processes right going in the cloud, and then they can take advantage of yeah you know the users uh, that want to use the web UI. And then and then that's that's also one way to kind of bridge that change management process. And that Correct. Gap. Instead of yeah. doing this, you know, this giant implementation, right? And, it's know. basically implementing a brand new ERP if you're just gonna 
basically rip and replace eight five with like a the modern AUX version. You know? Oh yeah, that's not even. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah you, you can't even compare. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're right. You it's basically like a new version, QAD, yeah, or something. You know? Exactly. Yeah, There's yeah. some benefits. Yeah. Okay. You know, to stay on the on the QED, you know, like it's not a complete new thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Terminology. Yeah. Okay. A lot of the terminology right. is the same, which is right. important, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, so, um, or even the, the knowledge of progress in the organization too, on the back end of things. Correct. That's helpful to have. It's helpful. It's not as critical as it used to be. Okay. uh, Yeah. Because a lot of what you can do is all in the, yeah. you know, so what does, I mean, I I know there's, there's kind of a few categories of support around the QAD application and, you know, it's no secret there's been a lot of changes that are happening in the QAD space around support. You know, we're not here to, to necessarily make commentary on QAD support specifically, um, but there there are opportunities for customers to take advantage of things outside of the of QAD themselves in supporting their application. Um, and I know Broom Street does a lot of that. Right. Um, we started uh, we started uh, with a couple customers, and now mm-hmm. we're, we're you know. You know, it's it's like concierge service, mm-hmm. right? We yeah. will offer the ability that customers can, you know, retain us at a monthly rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we provide it with a help desk software. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. we use a company called Zendesk, I think yep. they are. Yeah. And um, they lodge, lot, you know, they lodge a ticket and they get great support, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We don't, you know, we we try and get back to our customers in a way that they feel comfortable, and I yeah, yeah. I know you've talked to some of our customers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's definitely the case, and and that one there's a few in particular that that I've interviewed that have you know been very open about us sharing their commentary around their their experience with Broom Street support. So you know we we'll, we can either clip some of that in or or just you know stay tuned on some of these platforms that we'll be launching some of the commentary on you know within LinkedIn and things of that nature to, to learn more about how that, that application support has worked for people. Um, I know it's one thing, you know, one common objection that people think about is like, you know, I'm paying QAD for support. Why would I go and contract somebody else for support? And the biggest thing that I think, and one of the, one of the big things that I think you should consider if you're in that mindset is that QAD serves what five or six different industries five or six different verticals and is extended you know there, there's there's opportunities to customize there's opportunities to extend the application right. so one qad um even a qad cloud standard implementation it can be extended in x y and z ways is going to be different than the other one so it's not about just the bug support that you get from qad it's about like a, a, a customer or a new hire trying to figure out how to but, you know, create a purchase order and it's like, let me put in a, t- a ticket quick just to learn re- real quick instead of going to the Q- the software vendor that's set up to handle like bugs and things like that, Correct. that nature. Right. So that, I feel like that's kind of, it's more of the application of the application, you know? Yes. And it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, I deal with that every day. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I see the questions coming in. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How come my general ledger doesn't match my uh, inventory valuation? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's not an easy question to answer. Right. There's investigation that needs to be done, there, and it might not even be a QAD issue. It's not. You know? <laughs> Most times it isn't. It's a data issue. No, it's a or data a setup issue. So it. it's not a QAD yeah. issue. Oh, you didn't set up your product line right, or yeah. you changed your product line, or, yeah. you, or you did a journal entry into an inventory account that you weren't supposed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and those type of questions run the business. Yeah. Yep. And people want answers. Yeah. It's, it's well, like the cost is there. Like the question has to be answered regardless. So the, a company needs to think about how are they going to approach setting up their organization to answer those questions? Like, are you going to hire a bunch of people internally and have a QAD business analyst support staff that, that may or may not have the expertise? You have turnover. You've got all the, the joys of running that type of department. Or is are you going to hope that QAD it, they're they're not a services organization. They're a software organization. They're focused on building their product. You Correct. Know, are you going to hope that your maintenance contract is going to answer those qu- those questions? That's not a good model, <laughs> right. either. So it's more. I think it's more for somebody that wants the agility, the scrappiness of someone that's going to you know at five o'clock you know quickly send send in like a, a quick email because they've been there, done that. You know, you guys have been there, done that. It's yes. a fifteen minute investigation for you, as opposed to like a two month process. And there's the there's incredible value for yeah. cu- 
I think, yeah. that is provided. Yeah, yeah. Right? To yeah. Just be able to send an email or a ticket mm-hmm. or a phone call to an organization that can reply quickly and knowledgeably yeah. Yeah. to yeah. the issue in hand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How yeah. come I can't do I had one yesterday. They were so... Uh, Couple days ago, and it's it's the simplest thing. They tried to add a scheduled order line on a yeah. on a on a on an yeah. order, and like yeah. they sent me a screenshot, and they had an answer in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. So, what is what is the value in that? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, yeah. it's hard to quantify, but I think there's value, and that's we're seeing our business grow because of offering mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. type of concierge support. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, you see that in healthcare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, people have Medicare and Medicaid, yeah. but yeah. I know a lot of people. I'm not getting a, there yet. I'm close. <laughs> people put a doctor on retainer. Exactly. Just to, just so to have the, yeah. I have a question, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it definitely requires a certain approach and mindset. Um, and I think one of the things that can be really helpful is to think about how your your ERP application is used in the business. Um, and try and build a wider lens on that. Like everybody talks about, you know, for everything from like talent acquisition and retention, turnover is huge, especially in manufacturing. Right. So you've got that component, constantly people asking basic questions. It's like, we just held a QAD, you know, uh, um, training conference for two weeks last year. Well, now you've got five new people. <laughs> you exactly. know what I mean? So it's like, you've constantly got that to contend with. You've got an aging out, you know, knowledge base of people that you can bring in into direct employees of your organization to help with QAD right. and help with that. So it's it's almost a more agile approach instead of trying to go find that unicorn that you can hire, you know, into your organization. Right. Um, it's you could have someone that's more the facilitator of the relationship with someone like Broom Street or helping a, a user understand how to leverage that, that application, right. you know, that, right. that, uh, that service. So that's one consideration. I think that someone needs to take into consideration. And then also like where is software businesses going? Software businesses are trying to become like Google. When's the last time you got to call Google and ask them how to type in an address. I've maps. never, I use QuickBooks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've used QuickBooks for 20 years. I've yeah. never called QuickBooks right. for support. So you got to think about it, as, it, yeah, yeah, as a user of an ERP, you know, allow your consumer interactions with software to guide what's going to happen in 10 years, within five, 10 years of your, of your business applications. It's like what's happening with Google now where there's no support line, you know, it's just more and more intuitive. You know, exactly. But, but the the business side of that is like, OK, that might be intuitive, but they also need to understand the process. They need to understand the data. So you need somebody there to right. help, you know, he, um, and it, that's that's where I think Broom Street right. service. And ERP is com- is complicated. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, yeah, you do yeah. one you do one things wrong the wrong yeah. way. It affects. Yeah. Downstream, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, it all rolls into the general ledger. Right. Yeah. And then oh, someone's, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, you think about like, you know, somebody screws up something on a purchase order on an inventory based purchase order. Now you have that inventory. Your inventory is all screwed up. The invoice that you're getting, the accounting is like, what the heck? This is not right right," because they're thinking about what should have been purchased, you know, and then now you're now you've got a sales order that you need to use that inventory for. And now you're all jacked up there. It's like a simple situation of like. What do I do with this purchase order? Right. Quick question, five minute answer, and now you've eliminated all that cost. Right. You know what I mean? It's it's that's where the value right. is of it. You yeah, know? and it, you know, yeah, like you said, QED is yeah. not gonna. Right. Yeah, they're not gonna. You know, because there's nothing wrong with QED. And they should honestly, in my personal view, they shouldn't because that's where I think somebody like Broom Street or some some you know somebody can step in and help with those types of services. Correct. Those, those types of support. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that's, that's your total cost of ownership. Your total cost of ownership of, of QAD includes the cost that you have of people screwing up and trying to fix those Right, mistakes. and a lot of organizations <laughs> had people working in, yeah. in the past would have those business Right, to your point, experts. there's 10 people in the implementation. You got the implementation done. They're there for 20 years. You're good to go for 20 years. Right, know? they're not, that, that yeah. doesn't exist anymore. No, it's not happening. Yeah, it's it's, it's it just doesn't you know yeah. it's become IT's responsibility to to, to manage the yeah. business right yeah. and where I think yeah. uh, the misperception of Broom Street is that we're IT but they don't realize all this yeah you know 
I'll be I'll I'll have a mobile company yeah. uh, that I'm working with and yeah. and it's very focused. It's a mobile yeah. trunk thing yeah. and yeah. and then we just start chatting about yeah and they oh you know what, how QED works and <laughs> yeah. yeah you know you because yeah. you know and yeah. it's it's well to uh, properly extend that application you know you really need to know and it's and exactly. in order to provide that level of value that's that's why mobile desk is a better option to to take advantage of because the back it's like all that knowledge of QAD that we're talking about is also baked into these apps. That's correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like we know how these users will be interacting with sales orders because you've been doing it with them for 30 years. Right. You bake that into a product, you know, that right. now they can leverage as well. Right. You know, it's, so. it's, but one of the things that I that I was thinking about, I'm having Scott Gaines uh, from RX site on the QAD customer podcast. Okay, uh, we both know it. we do business with him. Yes, he's um, a he's a user of our field yeah, service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he he um he made a really good point. He's also very involved in the West Coast user group. Right, and he was talking about where he sees leveraging software and building the value of the that software in a business where he sees that going, and it's very right. uh, in line with this. So I think you know. You don't want to lament the situation that exists where, you know, you don't have these 10 people that are available to you in-house to help you with leveraging and applying QAD. Like, it's time to move on from lamenting over that situation. But where is the value? Where's the opportunity right. with that situation? And I think the opportunity there is to knowledge share across more senior level or executive level people that have that visibility to look through all those processes that and all the downstream effects and to level up the efficiencies gained that the software can provide. Right. You know what I mean? And that I think one component of that is to constantly be adjusting how that efficiency is gained and how you guys are approaching that as a business, as a manufacturer. So, and I think that's again, where this application service on a retainer basis can come into play is it helps you know, as a senior leader in a manufacturing business, you can leverage QAD to really build out an, an awesome process. It's efficient. It's going to scale. Our X site did that with their lens components right. that they do. Um, they're really scaling up massively. They got two people supporting the ERP, you know, on the business analytics side. And they side. have Broom Street too. Right. That's my point. Right. <laughs> you know, that's exactly my no, point. They, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they have the ability to call us at any time. Exactly. And that's that's the point. And it's there's like, value to that, in my opinion. Yeah. Scott Gaines, is, he's running operations at this point. Right. You know, but he's also, now he's the go-to guy for QAD. He leverages some, like a retainer basis with, with Broom Street as a part of or, or utilizing some of their, their extendable apps, like we're talking about right. Field Desk, um, to be able to fill that gap, you know, right. and be able, and now he can focus on how do I further leverage the software to help scale my business. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then you niche down, and that's QADs and has awesome niches within manufacturing. You know, those who have selected it, it's a great opportunity to niche down and let level up, you right. know, use those best practices. Yeah. But bring someone like Broom Street on to to make sure that you don't have the gaps in action in the actual execution. Right. Because that's where the variable is. Yeah. You know, the variable is going to be in the execution of how you leverage. Right. It. So but that's my salt. This is my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so kind of recap for us. So we, we talked about the um, the IP, like the mobile uh, platforms. Right. We talked about the services opportunities around the application. We talked about infrastructure services with Martin. Uh, we talked about Shopify channel advisors. Right. Um, so the the web portal side of things, like what? Talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, we work us. with a partner of ours, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. semi employee of ours yeah. that develops uh, like a portal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called E Four, mm -hmm. and it's basically uh, a platform mm -hmm. to be able to communicate with other systems. Yeah, and and also build their own systems yeah. within that. So we've partnered with them on. Shopping carts, mm -hmm. custom shopping carts. We've partnered with them on supplier portal. Yeah, yep. right. We've partnered with them at one point on a CRM, mm -hmm. but we sort of stopped yeah. uh, uh, that approach. But it's it's a way to the portal is a way to get data mm -hmm. all summarized mm -hmm. inside of 
yeah. of QAD. You're pulling yeah. all the data from all anywhere. It can pull it from QAD. It can pull it from any system, and it yeah. comes into this portal. Mm. And then that platform E4 it, uh, allows you to uh, do do whatever yeah. you, do whatever you really want to do. Yeah, it's it's, so it's the same. It's the same general concept around the mobile. It's exactly the same yeah. concept yeah. of the mobile. The it's only just, difference it's. It's more geared to like a, a, a bigger application, yeah. more so than like uh, an app. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, apps are very focused. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know, I need to have a computer to go in and, and do my, it's almost, like I said, it's almost like another website. Yeah. That's yeah. got all this data. Right. And, you know, we had a customer that had a CRM in there and then they just started pulling all sorts of QAD data in there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, one one thing that I've noticed that's really helpful for the customers I've talked to that are using that portal, um, you know, that there's opportunities for some self service even within that portal. Yes. You know, like a supplier can, uh, with one customer, you know, interact with those documents or upload new documents, things like that. That that eliminates the need for a purchasing department to have to handle those Correct. sorts of reminders or right. things of that nature. So, yeah. I mean, you know, a, you know, a lot of companies offer portals now. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. You go here to pay your invoices. Go here to right. do this. Go here right. to do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The days of actually interacting with a lot of people is, yeah. Yeah. is kind of coming to a, a close. You know, yeah. it's that's, yeah. again, back to our support mm -hmm. discussion we had. That, yeah. Well, and the, and the other component to that is it's a, it's a globalized workforce as well, you know, especially with being remote and things, right. like, things like that. The, when you're managing the back office, even of a manufacturer, you can have a global remote workforce, right? which time zones, you know, schedules, flex, you know, you want to be flexible, offer flex time, offer right. P, uh, tons of PTO. Somebody on PTO doesn't want to go and start calling up all their suppliers. You know what I mean? Yeah. They want to hop on the portal, get a little bit of work done, be done. Right. <laughs> you know right. I mean? Because, I mean, that's PTO. really what, you yeah. know, yeah. remote work has done. Everyone's yeah. working all the time now. Right. Yeah. They yeah. can say they're going on vacation, but <laughs> yeah. we're all connected. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. we, you know... For, for for some of us, we need to feel like yeah. we're not coming back to yeah. a mountain of work. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Myself to spend yeah, yeah to spend five or ten you know to spend an hour a day yeah. while you're on vacation to get yeah. everything done for yeah. peace of mind yeah. and being able to do it on your mobile device yeah. or on a portal yeah. where you know yeah. and now with the web UI it's sort of the same concept right yeah. you yeah. can just go to a website yeah that's all the that's all the Web UI is now a website, yeah, and you can get your work done. Well, that's one for you. The people that are listening is like talent retention. <laughs> <You know? laughs> There's a value. <laughs> that's a right. Clever way to think about that. You know, is the extendability of your ERP. You can attract and acquire better talent, and then also broaden the horizon. So that doesn't all have to be a local workforce. Right. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I have a customer that never went back to the office and they're a big, big mm -hmm. QAD. Mm -hmm. You know, they're almost a, a billion dollars in sales. Right. Wow. They never went back in the office. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> they never went back in the yeah. office. And, yeah. the, you the know, manufacturers, right. and, and for, for the support yeah. staff, oh, the manufacturing yeah. sites are still obviously yeah. there. But, yeah, yeah. you know, does that hurt or help? I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess the time will tell. But yeah. uh, well, it's almost like the market decides like you, you, you almost have to. <laughs> you know, yeah, what I, mean? I mean, it's people, like you can't even you know, sometimes imposing that could hurt the business, you know, like, oh, that we don't want to do it that right. way, you know, something. So, like that. Yeah, it's interesting. Cool. So it's it's a uh, it's a brave new world, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Cool. So any uh, parting thoughts or anything? Uh, no, yeah. no, not really. Yeah. And, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think I always enjoy talking with Steve, Stephen <laughs> Rosenthal. Yeah, that's right. Steve and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get like a show, the Steve and Steve hey. in the morning. <laughs> but uh, no, I think if you uh, want to learn more about some of these topics that we that we talked about, even even understanding how to think about leveraging QAD or, you know, what you could potentially be doing with QAD, you know, these guys are very focused on building equity and relationships, which I really appreciate. One of the main reasons why we partnered with them is, you know, they're not looking to come in nickel and dime your business. They no. want to help you guys. You know, they're, they're here to help you. So, you know, if you want to reach out, you know, you can come, 
come through through me because I'll be a good conduit because Steve's a busy guy. That's right. <laughs> so, um, or you know, we'll be we'll be on LinkedIn a lot uh, on Steve's profile, Martin and I. You know, um, and then the QAD Customer Podcast will be uh, somewhere that Broom Street will consistently show up. A lot of this information will be consistently provided on that show. We're relaunching that. Um, and Scott, Scott Gaines, one of the guys, you know, we talked about, we're also going to have some of the senior leaders in the C-suite on QAD themselves um, on that show coming up. So um, definitely stay tuned on that and feel free to reach out if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the topics that we're covering. Well, thank you, Steve. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool.